You miss me? Did you miss me? I missed me. Did you miss me? I missed me. I miss me too. No, real talk, y'all. Kill. I just lost an eight ball. I just lost an eight ball. Yo, I ain't gonna hold y'all. When I first, uh, when eight ball first came out, <laughs> when I started conversation, when I started story, I don't want to finish it. Y'all gonna see what happens. This is what I do. This is exactly what I do. I was the, I, um, uh, uh, I used to be hella jealous, like OC jealous. Like I was really bad with um jealousy in high school. So I did this. Really cute, like. I mean, we still date, but like, it was. She's really cute, like, crazy cute, right? Us ugly niggas need cute girls. Like, ugly niggas need love too, you know. So when iMessage games came out, yo, I was always thinking about like, who's you playing now? Who's you playing now? Who, who's you playing? That's a quick way for guys to, you know, hit on them and you know, talk to them. I was like, I would, I would think my way into a circle. Thank God, I no longer think that way, cause, ooh, that is. Torture. That was torture. Um, you know, I'm still, I'm, I'm still cautious. I still like, I still like think, uh, um, niggas are slick. But you know, I, I just be chilling. I don't, you know, she, the girls gonna do what they wanna do. Uh, insecurity it looks good on nobody. So, got chill. But honestly, guys, I just miss uploading. I just, I just like to upload and talk and just like you know, share my knowledge on hip hop. Cause I didn't really grow up on hip hop, and I just like it. I just think it's it's fun, it's fascinating. I'm like reading this uh, book on Jay Z, and this guy is a literal legend. Fun fact: Did you guys know that his first, like, he dropped uh, "Unreasonable Doubt" when he was 26? Yeah, that's like that's like OC tough. So I'm de I'm debating if I want to listen to "Unreasonable Doubt" or or um the Black Album. I know. Those two, that was his first, the Unreasonable Doubt was his first album that he released. And uh, the Black Album was the album that he released like last for his retirement. But obviously you guys now know that man did not retire at all. And which is fine, he just missed, he just missed being able to release and all that. Uh, but his, be his best album, according to everyone, is The Blueprint. And that's not on our music, which sucks. I would like to uh, listen to that too. Um, Reasonable Doubt is also not on our music, which is annoying, but also all we have is the Black Album. <laughs> but I'm the, I'm, I think that it's on you, on YouTube. Yeah, I think it's on YouTube. Let me look that up real quick. Let me look that up for y'all. Cause I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to listen to. I'm, probably, I'm gonna figure it out. Um, Reason for that was his first mixtape. I know that's like really old. So we go. I'm gonna call someone to see if I should listen to. I'm gonna just. Or I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask for my uh, more. My better friends that know hip hop. Boy, is just much in the story. He's more. He's more actually a better historian than I am. Like he knows a lot more hip hop stuff than I do. Hey boy. What's good, baby? I'm going, I'm doing a, 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 I'm about to like take it back to the past for like a, a, a video that I'm doing. And I'm thinking about doing Reasonable Doubt for a first reaction of the Blueprint or the Blackout. Which one do you think I should do? Reasonable Doubt, the Blueprint, the Blueprint or the Blackout. Yeah, that's, yeah. So Reasonable Doubt was arguably. I think, I think you would have to go with Reasonable Doubt. I'm sorry from the beginning. All right. Yeah. That was, that was, that's what I was thinking, because I already had the track list up and everything. All right, boy. All right, boy, be easy, one well, love. Peace. Well, there you have it, Reasonable Doubt. So, we're back with Reasonable Doubt. And we got, first one is Hard, I Can't uh, Knock the Hustle. Not gonna lie, don't know, know what nothing about. Um, I don't know if I've heard any of these songs, but we gonna see. I know this album is like, what, 90%, 94, but like, no, 94% of people like this album. I know this album is more like um, more like a uh, thuggy, gritty type of album. So we gonna see, we gonna see. This one's five minutes long, so we gonna see. Listen, let's listen to this kid. Why Verizon now comes with six months of free Apple Music. I like music. I like popcorn. How dare you? Get three hundred dollars off our best iPhones on the network you deserve. Dig me! You put me on what, man? There's a bunch of Colombians coming in Friday. Thanks to the bye, buddy. Uh, let me just give you some uh, brief background on Jay Z. So Jay Z did not want to be like he was a great skill rapper, 
and but he did not want to rap like he saw the so jay-z is like a very money forward kind of guy right so he saw the potential money in selling drugs and took off with it and yeah i mean so it it, it wasn't until he saw the potential of money you can get rapping that's when he started rapping basically he didn't rap like Rapping was not his first to go. Like he was not always like I'm gonna do this rapping full time. No, bro, it was pushing dope and he was selling crack and he was getting money. Like I think he had a, he had a Lexus. Lexus. That's how much money he was getting. He could have got something. Could have got more, but I forgot why he didn't. But yeah, that's if you hear a lot of drug talk, it's because it's a completely different Jay Z to what we have now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rockefeller, yo. Uh -huh. Nelson in the next Luca. Tire smoke like Buddha. Yo, yo, he said it right there. He said it right. I just told you how when he was selling dope, he was driving a Lexus. Yo, he just said it right there. Oh, that's crazy. That is so crazy, man. That's so crazy. He didn't know his father, like at this point and at this point in age, he didn't know his father, and I felt like at this point in his life he had a lot of resentment towards. Oh yeah, by the way, the rapper, the singer that is Mary J. Blige and Pain and that. It was really crazy back there. Someone's name is Pain and that. Pause. Um. So yeah, I felt like he he held a lot of resentment. <laughs> he, <laughs> I can't get over his name, bro. <laughs> Anyway, he he he, uh, he held a lot of resentment to his dad at this point. Uh, I feel like in his life, and um, and he actually, fun fact, he didn't um know his dad. Like he didn't like have like a um a talk or a revolution with his father until much later. And I think right after when he had that talk with his dad, he held no more malice against him, and that's when his dad passed. But I'm happy that Jay Z got to do get that get that with his father. Okay, so um, that song, I just want to point out that I would I probably I like that song. Like that's like hearing this song from so long ago. Like what is this? Like 20 years later. Like I, I like this song. Like um, I feel like I'm basically reading. I'm getting a recap of what the book is. Like he's telling his life and what's going on in his life, and it's very transparent. First song. I feel like this, I think he releases as a single first. For a reason, unreasonable doubt, because right here it's a different, um, it's a different, uh, it's a different single. Um, I'm not reading any of the lyrics, but if I, it's been, just from what I hear, it's just a song about, it's just a song about my man's life. Like, that's crazy. Um, I do like this song a lot. I do like this song a lot. I'm ready, I'm excited to hear the next song. I'm so excited. The next song is Politics As Usual. I kind of just want to, I kind of want to foreshadow what the song is about. I feel like the song will probably be about two things. Uh, well, I feel like it will, it's two comments. I don't feel like it'll be about politics itself. Because I feel like Jay-Z is the type of guy who respects his money. Like he, like you, like if you want to respect Jay-Z, respect his pocket. Do not, do not go for his pocket. His money is very... Uh, meaningful to him, and I have a friend like that. Um, very, very uh, close tight to his money. Not in a bad way, though. I don't think it's bad. He's just very cautious and conscious of his of his money. So res to res respect Jay Z is probably on the same level as to respect his money. So when he's out there hustling, you have to understand that there's a system that I I did I deal my deal with my drugs, and, and there was a system to how he did he did the drugs. No cutting corners. No no uh here you go. I'll pay me back later. Nah, like you getting this right now, you paying me right now. And I feel like that is a very smart way to do business. Um, yeah, that's just me foreshadowing. I don't, I don't know what song gonna be about. Uh, so I think that I was pretty spot on with my uh, <laughs> prediction of what the song was gonna be be about. It's basically just about like how he was saying back to the as 
It's politics as usual. Wow, wow I almost said the whole hook. <sighs> but um, it's basically what like I I feel like I was completely right. It uh, was exactly what I thought it was gonna be about. The one thing that I just just uh, am happy to see that he's not in. He, he said he couldn't sever his tie with the underworld. Um, Cause at that time, after reasonable doubt, he was still doing that stuff to my knowledge. Let me think. I think he was. I'm not sure, but as his music is said, he couldn't under, he couldn't uh, separate his his uh, his dealings with under with selling drugs and all that. Um, but yeah, I don't like that song honestly. I, I, I like Con, uh, Can't Knock the Hustle. But next song is Brooklyn Finest. And what the thing with Brooklyn's, fi uh, Brooklyn's Finest is that um, it was sort of the New, it was, it was sort of New York's, uh, wait, I can't remember. Dang it, I feel so uninformed. I feel so uninformed, I wish I could tell y'all. I just know that like, he had a song that was like New York's Anthem. I think this was the one. I think uh, Biggie's on this one as well. But I feel like there was there was one where Biggie wasn't on it. But all I know is that he performed at a baseball stadium. I'm not sure if this was the song or not. But let's just listen to it anyway. It doesn't really matter. Hey, we're roots. And we can hey, you up to we're roots. Of car insurance rates. Hey, yeah. we're roots. Did I, I? I just wanted to say that. Um, uh, so Biggie was bigger than uh, Jay Z at the time, but. What happened was once they got into the studio, Jay Z was like the godfather of like writing with no pen, going into the studio but having no pen and no pad, no pencil, none of that, and would just spit off the dome, like literally spit off the dome. And Biggie didn't do that. He did that after he saw Jay Z's uh, spitting with no dome. Pause. Uh, spinning off the dome. But let's just get into this. Case to your face, make the shell muffle. Shoot your daughter in the calf muscle. Fuck a tussle, nickel plated. Sprinkle coke on the floor, make your drug later. Most scared, so you sent your little mans to come kill me. But on the contrary, I packs the Mac Mini. Push seven hundred, they ain't made them yet. Rolex and I can't stop thinking about this man say he will shoot you and your daughter's calf. Yo, they was ruthless back then. They was ruthless. Hey. You don't stop. Play me up for Marcy. I'm Marcy. Chuck your JB. Took a J before I blaze the place. And here's six shots just in case. Okay, I don't know if I'm overthinking it or not, but this man said six shot shots, six shots just in case. And when I heard heard case. I was kind of like, hold up, is Biggie that, is Biggie that hard, is Biggie that hard? So I looked up, only shits six shots, and it said revolver, and revolvers, why do revolvers have six bullets? What if, what if Biggie's saying, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna unload this whole, uh, my whole clip, just in case. You get it? Like, that's, like, that's crazy, like, if that's what he meant, Crazy bar. I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to load six shots just in case. Yo, like that's like that's crazy because you know it's not a punchline, but like people make that a punchline, but he didn't make that a punchline. Ooh, that bar is kind of nasty. I can't stop thinking about that. Ooh, Ooh. Biggie. All right, my guy. So um, at this time when Jay Z was uh, in the studio with with um with uh, Biggie. I don't know who it was exactly, but someone warned someone trying to warn Jay-Z that if you put out this put out this song, you will be overshadowed by Biggie and you will look you'll be looked at by Biggie. You'll be looked at as Biggie's sidekick. And um that that Jay-Z didn't listen obviously and Jay-Z and a lot of critics uh didn't see that as that. They saw that Jay-Z Biggie did an amazing job and Jay no no yeah Biggie no Biggie did an amazing job and Jay-Z held his own. And I thought that was really cool. I thought that was really tough. And also he just said Crystal. Crystal, there's a whole story with Crystal. Um but that's not important. I'm gonna leave that again, I'll leave it alone and continue to listen to this fire song. Where you from? Hey, 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 
Uh, I like that song. That is definitely, that would definitely be a banger back in the day. That is a banger now. I do like that song a lot. I like how the, the contra contrast and flow and they were going back and forth. I really thought they were, oh wait, um, this is contra contrast between bars. It wasn't a bar for bar, but it was bar for bar, but it was like, um, when it was, it was like four bars for four bars, six bars for six bars. That was tough. That was cool. Um, if I could keep the song in my library, I would like I would keep the song in my library. Like definitely, no doubt. Definitely. Let's, let's listen to the Dead Presidents number two. I don't know I don't know any history about this one, but you know we're gonna listen to it anyway. <laughs> No, we don't just shine, we illuminate the whole show. You feel me? Infection from the oven for me. I do you one better and slay these niggas faithfully. Murder bill spending money for 88. That's crazy. He made that much money? I make you and your whack man fold like bad hands, roll like Monopoly. Fans catch me in the joints, convince my iguanas is biting. This song is so heavy. The beat don't make it any better. This is some good music right here. This is some good music. Like, this beat is crazy, bro. Who made this beat? Yo, I just love the beat. Like, this beat is so crazy, bro. This song might have to be one of the deepest, craziest songs so far to listen to. Um, so Sky uh, Ski Beats produced that song. I'm looking that up at on Jesus right now. I like this song a lot. Um, uh, the craziest thing they said on here was that he still, at that time, at that time he was still spending money on. He was still spending money at that time. From his drugs, uh, from the drugs that he was uh, getting money from. From 88, bro, when he dropped this, when did he drop this? Like, hold on. When did Jay-Z drop Reasonable Doubt? Yo, and it was 1996. Yo, he was pushing mutt, pushing hella crack. <laughs> From 1988 to 1996, yo, yo, Jay Z is a freaking legend, yo. Like, I don't support pushing drugs. I've never been a part of that life. Thank God, my dad raised me right. Um, that's crazy, man. Like, that's actually OC. To be still selling, still be still using your drug money, and, and from 1996, like, he probably was. That's that's OC. That's OC. Um. This song was just really sad, but I like this song a lot. I would literally listen to this song a lot if I could. <laughs> um, this is my favorite song so far. The whole, the whole jump, like real talk. This, this is really great. This is this is a great song. Sky Beats did an amazing job. The next song is Jay Z feeling it. I kind of know how I kind of don't know how I feel about this song. Um, I know I do like what he's talking about. I believe that he said that if you're if you're, if everyone's in your, if everyone's in your crew is rich, then there's no crush. Something like that. Um, I like that. I think Mecca did an amazing job. I didn't know who, who the who person was singing, so I looked her up. Mecca, I guess she doesn't really have a lot of music out, I guess. But I do like that song a lot. I like the, the hook was amazing. The hook was, the hook was really amazing. Uh, but I don't know if it's, I would only keep this song just to have it. But I would have to listen to the song again. Cause I, I honestly was not listening. Cause I was just trying, I was so fixated on trying to listen, figure out who uh, Mecca was. But I did hear him talking about Chris Stahl. Uh, the one thing I wanted to say about Chris Stahl, if you guys don't know, Chris Stahl, um, he used to rep this like a lot. Like it was a it's very, Chris Stahl is a very expensive champagne. And so he used to rep it a lot because Champagne used to mean like very like rich, high status, high caliber. Um, 
And no, it, and, yeah. Um, but then they said something very. Uh, someone asked them how they feel about hip hop, for instance, Jay Z uh, repping Crystal, and he said, "Well, I mean, you can't really stop him from buying it." And that was a little. That was a little. That was a little much, in my opinion. I, I, that was that was a little bit more on the racist side, and um, that's when Jay Z stopped repping it. And their their their, their sales kind of plummeted for a little bit, but then it shot back up. Um, that's why we have Ace of Spades now. This is uh, Jay Z's wine, and it's heard that this man creates this champagne for thirteen dollars and sells it for three hundred dollars. Um, and apparently, it's not even that great of great of champagne. Like that's crazy. Like that's that's how much influence Jay Z has. Um, I don't know when exactly this did happen, but yeah. I, mean, uh, I would listen to this. I would have to listen to, listen to this again just to understand what's going on. Honestly, I'm not gonna fake anything. I might listen to this again. Okay, so I listened to it again. Yo, like, I like that song a lot. I like this song a lot because first he was talking about um, he talked about a lot of things, man, a lot of freaking things about the crystal. How I talked to you about that and how he said. Uh, on a sunny day, he's gonna be out there even when it's raining. Like he's gonna be grinding regardless of what it, how he feels, regardless of how, how it is outside, regardless of anything. He's always gonna be grinding, always trying to chase that bag, always trying to put himself in a better position than he was yesterday. And that is so freaking inspirational and crazy. And I do like this song a lot. Like now, listen, actually listen to it again. I do like this. I know this is the first reaction, but. I had to listen to that song again. And the last thing he was saying, how his mom wanted him to stop because he might get shot. There's a fun fact. Um, there was this time when he was selling drugs, he was selling like dope, and there was he, he got shot at like 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 right here. He got shot at three three different times, three different times, and every bullet missed. Every bullet. But he said that in the last uh, in Dead Presidents, and I forgot to say something about that, but. God be coming through. God come through. So I like I'm feeling it. I really do like that song a lot. Next song is The Devil. I don't know who the hell God he is, but so he that has me kind of thinking a little bit. He said, much of his friends don't talk much right now, but because they're all trying to get their bag right now, but maybe that's a good thing because they might stab you in the back. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that one. But I do, I do like the direction it's going in right now. He said he doesn't pray to God, he prays to God. But then he, then he started talking about how 9 to 5 is, not, is, the, is, the, like, is the best way legally to get money. But he's not undermining that you can illegally get money and that's how he chose to do because that's how he didn't want to live that 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 safe life that he wanted to live it on the edge I guess and plus you get more money that way interesting song interesting so far uh, he did not believe in God at this time Yo! Oh my God. Yo! This man keeps. That second, it, it kind of sounded. The, the verses, the, the two verses did sound uh, very, very uh, similar, if I'm being honest. Um, a lot of it was just with friendships turning uh, lesser into friendships because of money in the way and women in the way he said that at that time and age they had rubbers but one of his friends didn't have rubbers so he took his baby mama crazy by the way jay-z is insane crazy man um but he said feed her money that is crazy yo like these guys weren't doing metaphors and punchlines back like these guys were not doing punchlines back in these guys were in like these guys had in their system to make bars. Oh man, and that that could just mean like there was friction in their household, so he would just buy her. that would make her happy. And that, that's what that's he would figure out like that's 
you give them the money. You know how that's what how like relationships work. They either like you keep the girl happy with money, and that's crazy. I'm in awe. Yo, Jay Z's the worst man. I gotta pee. I'll be back. The next song is 22 Twos. Uh, so just from uh, from my knowledge of just already know what this song uh, reading up about uh, Jay Z, I already know that he says 22 two. He says two 22 times. I think that that was the case, but we're gonna listen to it anyway. Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Maria Davis, Mad Wednesdays. We here tonight to have a good time. Check this out. Too much West Coast dick licking and too many niggas on a mission. Doing your best, JC rendition. I'm gonna call you a hoe. Too many bitches are shady. Too many ladies get these niggas. Too many chances. Too many brothers want to be lovers. Don't know a romance. With my brothers, it ain't too late to come together. Cause too much black and too much love equal forever. Look in your casket, feeling sarcastic. Look at them, still sleeping. You're never ready. Forever petty. Mine stay petty. Mine's thinking longevity. You are for that. At the end, it said that we need to start our own labels, our own, uh, our own record companies, our own everything. Just black-owned businesses we need to start that up, our own stuff, and be able to put money back into our community. Um, I definitely agree with that, and I do like this song. The song is definitely it's, t it's a tight song. The tight song. The wordplay was amazing, and the beat was cr the beat was tight. And it looks like the ski beats. Produce this one too. The next song is Can I Live? Do do do. Oh, I might like this song. So we all for you. Well, we all for our lives. Hoes are get you sidetracked and clap on cold speed. I don't sleep, I'm tired. I feel wired like Codeine. Y'all believe my squad and me lack of respect for authority. Laughing hard, happy to be escaping poverty. Better trip the now we on it. Presidential sweets, my residential for the weekend. Confidentially speaking in code since I sent you speaking. Now, done. Done. I like how like you can tell where Jay Z's at in his music because he's talking about his Lexus, he's talking about his gang, the uh um in the song, but he doesn't necessarily talk about that stuff now. Well, he didn't talk about that in uh 444, so his his uh, gang and how like there's definitely maturity uh in his music from Jay Z from uh, Reasonable Doubt to 444, and I think that's actually quite extraordinary. And I don't mean that just for Jay Z, but for music in general, to be able to see your progression as you grow up, and that's just really cool. I think that's really nice, and that it's out there, and that will ever, ever be out there. Um, I was that I was confused a little bit because I thought he said keep one eye open like CVS, and then I I, I would I, so I was like what the hell is that? CVS what the hell is that? But then I thought CV like US like maybe it was something I looked that up, but he meant. CBS. Oh, he said CBS. I just heard him say CBS. CVS. But they didn't even have a CVS back then. <laughs> they already just went like crazy. I'm sleep. I'm getting a little tired. Not gonna lie. It's what 9:45. You know the grind must definitely uh, one of my favorites. Can I live? Uh, next song is Ain't No Nigga. Fresher than the next bitch. No need for you to. No one can fuck you better. Sleeps around, but he gives me a lot. Keeps you in diamonds and leather. Keeps you in diamonds and leather. Friends are telling me I should leave you alone. Uh, I don't like this song because the production was very in your face and very annoying. The same four, same four measures, the whole entire song, and it was very boring. And that's usually how it is back. I mean, that's how it usually is. But I mean, this song, this beat was just really bad. I didn't like this beat. Uh, Jazzo produced this beat, and uh, that was one of Jay Z's mentors back in like. Like when they start first started rapping, I don't I think that they're not cool now. I don't have that. To the best of my ability, they're not cool now. Um, I just do not like the song. It's very boring. But I do like how Farsi Brown came in, and uh, I didn't know who that was until I looked her up. Who's rapping? That hook wasn't either. I didn't really like that hook either. 
I just didn't like the hook. I didn't like the beat. Fancy Brown rapping was really cool. It was refreshing. Um, I like when girls rap that aggressive rap. Um, but yeah, I don't like that song. Next song is Friend or Foe. Foe. Playing through my feet right now. So I I enjoy storytelling songs. I think like they're like it's among my top favorite songs ever. Like honestly, I just love hearing rappers tell stories. I think it's very uh, awesome. I just like hearing them. Uh, so this one was crazy. This one was definitely a, one of I like this song a lot. It's Friend or Foe '98. That's when I was born. 1998. This one, this one was cool. This one, I like this song a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Come experience life as we know it. Life as we know it. I can help shorty blow out like Afro Sheen. Plus I could relive my days of you, which is gone. That little nigga's peeps. It's time to get down and when they run it on my own too. Oh, that's nice. That is coming of age. I like that song uh, for about two reasons. I like the song because I like the back and forth between the two rappers. I feel like rappers don't songs aren't like that nowadays. Um, I do like that type of song. It's a nice song. I like the camaraderie between the, the two. Um, Clark Kent was the one who produced that song. I'm looking at it right now on Genius. And uh, Clark Kent was kind of the reason why Jay Z is where he's at right now, which I really hope they're still cool to this day. Um, but yeah, that's what, that was a uh, coming of age. Next song is. Catch me your thoughts. I'm kind of curious to what this song is about. This man, Jay Z, is a wild man. Um, yeah, Clark Kent was on this one as well. Clark Kent is just a great producer, honestly. I like his, I like his production and what he does with the uh, production. Uh, Jay-Z, I like, uh, this song was okay. I didn't really like the song too much, I'm being honest. I probably will never play it again. Actually, well, I can't. <laughs> I can't play it again, you know? But, next song, but the next song is Bring It On. Five minutes long. Goodness. This song was just a barred up. These things was barred up and all that crazy song. Uh, well, lyrically. Um, uh, this was produced by DJ Premier and Jazzo and Sauce Money were on this song as a feature. But I told you about how Jazzo was uh, one of uh, Jay Z's teachers. Um, but I had to listen to the song again, honestly, to uh, find out the appreciation of it. But uh, I feel like uh, certain lines I will quote in my Instagram post or Twitter post because like it it could be inspiring. But other than that, next song is decide to see what regrets is gonna be about. Listen to this jump right now. What could he regret so early on in his career? Stress. The production is crazy right now. But one of these wires got eyes like a Korean. It's difficult to read them. The windows to his soul, like Tom Warner, a waiting call from his kin, not the core in the phone in my hand. Nervous can find to a corner. Uh, so the la so that song regrets was uh, very kind of it was very emotional and I can see how this could be a very touching song for uh, himself and saying how the lifestyle that he used to live you had to well if you want to be successful you gotta learn you gotta learn how to learn with regrets you gotta learn to live with regrets and be able to move on and still push forward to get what you want um, very very uh, touching song I would definitely listen to the song again. Um, so let's think about this album. My thoughts. Um, this is Jay Z, first official studio album. I only didn't like two songs, and probably at the time I don't. Um, 
I definitely do like this album. It's a very good album. Very nice album. I do like this album a lot. Um, I can see why some people love this album. This was definitely a great album. Um, but I kind of just want to listen to this other projects to see his progression because this is the album that was in the middle between the Blueprint and the Black Album. So apparently this song, this album isn't as good as the Black Album. So uh, I don't know what to compare my, my, my taste to. Um, but people say this is a classic album. Uh, this is one. This is Jay Z's best album. I don't know. I don't. I really hope it's not because it was a. It was a really good album. But um, I did like 444. 444 was an amazing album. Very great album. Very diverse and very amazingly sound uh, album. Sounds drastically different and what Jay Z's talking about is drastically different from what he's talking about now. Um, it's a lot of drug talk. A lot of uh, street talk. And the 44 is, I mean, I don't really deal with, I don't really connect with this. I, I connect with it a little, um, but this this album just wasn't, it, it wasn't meant for, it wasn't made for me at all. But definitely still a great album. Um, yeah, guys, so much y'all think about the album. I'm gonna start doing this more often since I didn't really grow up around hip hop. My family didn't really do that for me, or they weren't really into it. Um, just, I'm gonna just be doing more of these just while I'm listening to more new albums. I know, I know a lot of old albums, I just don't listen to them, um, but, this will be a re reason for me to listen to them um, and just share my thoughts and share how I feel about them. Uh, what I'll probably give this album probably eight, 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 eight out of ten, honestly, eight out of ten. A uh, dope album, great album. But alright, y'all. Peace.